Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to delve a little bit deeper into minimum wage as an example of a labor market rigidity and its impact on structural unemployment. There is a video that explains in at the microeconomic level the impact of minimum wage with a full analysis and evaluation on the impact on stakeholders. So I'll put a link in the top right corner and in my macro uh, playlist for discussing aspects of unemployment, it's also included in that playlist. This video will go into a little bit more detail highlighting the impact of minimum wage on the labor market, on output markets, and also on the national economy. So minimum wage is a price floor, as you would have learned in microeconomics, that raises the wage typically for low-skilled labor within an economy. And it can have impacts um, that are positive for low-skilled workers that are employed, earning a higher wage to cover necessities, but it also can have some impacts on youth unemployment and low-skilled youth unemployment, which we're about to, to look at and, and take a look at. Um, here in this Wikipedia page discussing minimum wage, we can see minimum wage by not by nations uh, in U.S. dollars (PPP) purchasing power parity. The top we see Switzerland, and in this video we're going to focus on France. France uh, with in the year 2020, 12 dollars and 60 cents purchasing power parity as their minimum wage, which we can see is greater than the United States, which is down here at 8 dollars purchasing power parity. So what is some potential impacts of that higher minimum wage in France versus the United States and that imp and what's that impact on youth unemployment um, and also unemployment for low-skilled workers. So that's what we're going to take a look at. Further down within that Wikipedia page regarding uh, minimum wage, there's a lot of debate between economists regarding the impact of minimum wage and in theory minimum wage would generate greater unemployment or structural unemployment, uh, but that is often debated. But in this particular study that's mentioned here, uh, it highlights, let's see here, France, right? Here we're going to uh, use France as our applied example. France has the rich world's highest wage floor at more than 60% of the median for adults, which is larger than the United States, which is at 38% of the median income. And it says in this article from The Economist that although France has the higher wage floor at 60% of the median income for adults, it has a far bigger fraction of the typical uh, typical wage for the, for the youth. But this helps explain why France also has a shockingly high rate of youth unemployment. Unemployment for those between the ages of 15 and 24, if that's the legal age to work, um, and their in inability to find employment, 26% unemployment in France. So let's look at uh, France and see if we can see that correlation for our applied example. France, here we're looking at gross minimum monthly wage rising over time, minimum wage is increasing over time, and we can see that there's a dramatic increase in minimum wage in this point here. And we're going to try to correlate that with the youth unemployment in France. So you can see right after 2004, there's an increase in minimum wage. And if we look at the youth unemployment in France after 2004, there's also kind of a sudden increase in youth unemployment at that point. Um, so we're just going to assume that those two are correlated with each other, right? I can't say for a fact whether that's the case or not, but let's just make that assumption. For comparison purposes, let's look at U.S. youth unemployment. So in France, youth unemployment is quite high, right? Touching on 26% unemployment. Uh, maybe going down to about 16% unemployment. For the most part, it seems to be floating between 20, 24% unemployment. In the United States, relative to that, if we look at U.S. youth unemployment, it's not uh, typically touching 20%. It's kind of floating between 10 and 15%, right? If we take out the shocks of the 2008 crisis and the pandemic, on average, it seems to be floating between 10 and 15% in the U.S., where again, in France, over that same time period, it seems to be floating between maybe about 
and 24% approximately. If we look at another chart illustrating just unemployment in general, not youth unemployment, but national unemployment, the purple line here illustrates the United States. And unemployment in the United States is typically between 4 and 6% on average over time. Here's the 2008 crisis that rose unemployment, all right, cyclical unemployment being generated. But let's pay attention to the gap between France, which is the blue line, and the United States. And we can see that there's a pretty wide gap between the two. Whereas the United States might have about 6% unemployment, France has about 10% unemployment. So France has maybe about 4% more unemployment than the United States on average. And that's typical within the European Union. U European Union has a little bit more uh, unemployment on average than the United States. Their natural rate of unemployment typically higher than the U.S. And uh, the, the red line here, I believe, is the European Union. The European Union has stronger labor protection laws, and those laws create structural aspects of structural unemployment, uh, which also increases their natural rate of unemployment. So that's some background data to see um, the impacts of different legislation, labor market rigidities, labor market flexibility, and its impact on unemployment within uh, an economy. So let's illustrate this as we would for an exam. And also see the connections between what's happening at the microeconomic level and how it impacts things on the macroeconomic level. So in macroeconomics, you might be asked to illustrate an aspect of structural unemployment and how it's generated. It could be under the category of labor market rigidities legislation, laws, uh, or other factors that make the labor market more rigid, meaning it's a little bit more difficult for firms to potentially hire and fire workers. If it was more flexible, it would be easier for firms to hire and fire workers. One of these labor market rigidities could include minimum wage. So our focus today is illustrating minimum wage. So in graph A, we are illustrating an input market for labor. So it's the market for low-skilled labor in France. And on the y-axis, we're measuring wage. And on the x-axis, we're measuring the quantity supplied and demanded of labor. In graph B, we're looking at the market for outputs in France. So uh, firms need to employ inputs like labor to generate outputs. We're measuring price on the y-axis and the quantity of outputs on the x-axis. And in graph C, we're looking at the French national economy, we're measuring the price level on the y-axis and real GDP on the x-axis with our upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve and our downward sloping AD curve. So the focus is gonna be on graph A, graphing and analyzing minimum wage, but then we can see its impact on graph B and on graph C. So graph A, so we have an upward sloping supply of labor. Supply is provided by the household. Um, so don't forget that some students may forget since we're so used to illustrating output markets that in the labor market or an input market, it's the household that is supplying uh, resources like labor. So I'm just gonna make a little note so we don't forget that it's the household here that is providing uh, labor. And the downward sloping demand curve is the demand by firms for labor. So I'm just gonna make a little note so we can remember that now firms are demanding labor. In your circular flow model, the focus here is the resource market. So this is kind of an illustration of that resource market. Where S1 equals D1, it provides an equilibrium at point A with an equilibrium wage in the free market at W1 and equilibrium quantity in the free market at Q1, where quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. So it might be deemed by the people in France that this free market wage of W1 is too low for households uh, low-skilled households to afford their necessities. So the French government steps in and they apply a price floor, which uh, increases the wage for low-skilled workers so that they can afford their necessities. So let's bring it up to this point here. So here's that perfectly elastic line that's illustrating wage at minimum. The higher wage incentivizes households to go out, join the labor market, and look for work. So households that are low-skilled are incentivized. So they're trying to increase the quantity of supply of their labor into the labor market, looking for work. 
and that takes us to point B. So we're going to draw that quantity here. Here we have at Q2 the quantity supplied of labor. But it disincentivizes firms to employ labor at the higher wage. Right? Firms don't have enough uh, revenue to afford the higher cost of labor. So the quantity of demand starts to decrease along their demand curve from point A to point C. So we're going to illustrate that quantity of demand here. And we'll label that Q3. So here we see quantity of demand by firms is less than the quantity supplied. So that's an excess supply of labor. Thus, that means that the higher minimum wage has generated structural unemployment. And the, the quantity of those, that are, the quantity of labor that is unemployed is the distance between Q3 and Q2. We have this quantity of households looking for work and unable to find work because firms can't afford the higher um, wage. So the quantity of workers, the quantity of household labor that is seeking work or seeking employment And the quantity being from Q3 to Q2, they're seeking uh, employment, but they're not able to find employment. So thus, they become structurally unemployed. Okay, quantity of labor seeking employment and the quantity being from Q3 to Q2 becomes structurally unemployed. So essentially, I'll, let me highlight that. We have workers from this point to this point seeking employment, but they cannot find a job because firms are only demanding labor from this point to this point, right? From quantity zero to Q3, firms are finding labor and employing these workers here. But those workers from Q3 to Q2 are unable to find a job due to the higher wage that firms can't afford. So in theory, minimum wage generates structural unemployment. What is the impact in the output market for, um, for firms in France? So for firms in France that utilize uh, low-skilled labor to generate some type of output, the higher minimum wage increases costs of production. So the Higher wage will cause the SRAS curve to ship, shift upward or inward. So it shifts upward or inward by the amount of that increase in the wage. So it goes from S1 to S2. Takes us from point A to point B. All right, so if the input prices rise and wage is an input cost to the firm. The supply curve will shift in or uh, inward or upward by the amount of that additional cost of labor. The wages is causing the supply curve to shift upward or inward. So it takes us to point B. So if input prices go up like wage, then the output price will go up from P1 to P2. And that will reduce the quantity of outputs from the firm from Q1 to Q2. And that would also lead to a reduction in the quantity of demand by households for those outputs from point A to point B. So there, since there's a, a lack of quantity of demand for goods and services, that means that firms will unemploy labor. And so since we have that reduction in the quantity of output, firms will unemploy labor and that will lead to higher unemployment, structural unemployment in the economy. So this is what happening, what's happening with um, firms at the microeconomic level, but collectively, all firms that utilize low-skilled labor
are all impacted by this legislation that requires a higher minimum wage. So at the macroeconomic level, the SRAS curve would shift in from SRAS 1 to SRAS 2. One of the shifters of aggregate supply are costs of production, which includes wages. So wages collectively rising across the national economy for low-skilled labor causes the aggregate supply curve to shift upward or inward, and that will take us again to point B. Here we have point B. And since input prices across the economy for low-skilled labor is rising, that would lead to rise, uh, a rise in output prices from PL1 to PL2. And a reduction in GDP from Y1 to Y2. And due to the higher price level, the quantity of aggregate demand will decrease across the French economy and firms will unemploy resources, thus also explaining the rise in youth unemployment in France. Okay, so there we see connections between microeconomics and uh, firms in microeconomics and nationally at the macro level, the impact of um, a labor market rigidity such as minimum wage. So I'm going to go ahead and analyze this as I would for a paper exam. As can be seen, we're going to illustrate a labor market rigidity, in this case, minimum wage, the application of minimum wage in France, and how the application or imposition of minimum wage uh, can create structural unemployment. In graph A, we're illustrating the market for low-skilled labor, low-skilled labor as an input in production in France. On the y-axis, we're measuring wages, and on the x-axis, we're measuring the quantity of labor supplied and demanded. We have a downward sloping demand curve for labor equal to our marginal benefit, and demand is uh, driven by firms demanding labor as an input. We have an upward sloping supply curve according to the law of supply equal to S1, which is equal to the marginal cost uh, for the household to build the skills to offer their labor into the labor market, and it is the, it is the household that is supplying their labor. We have a free market equilibrium where S1 equals D1 at point A which provides in a free market equilibrium wage at W1 and a free market equilibrium quantity at Q1 where the quantity supplied equals the quantity demanded. Because the free market wage of W1 is deemed uh, too low to cover necessities by uh, people in French society, the government intervenes and decides to impose a price floor for wage. So that becomes minimum wage that's set above the free market equilibrium at W min. That higher wage incentivizes households to offer their labor in the labor market. So the quantity supplied of labor increases along the supply curve from point A to point B. But firms are not able to employ labor at that higher wage. So the quantity of demand by firms for labor decreases from point A to C. So we can see that with minimum wage, the quantity supplied of labor at Q2 is greater than the quantity demanded for labor by firms at Q3, which generates excess supply of labor. Thus, the quantity of labor seeking employment from Q3 to Q2 and unable to find a job, and they're actively looking for a job, become structurally unemployed and contribute to the natural rate of unemployment in France. Okay? How does this uh, impact outputs in the French economy? In graph B, can also illustrate how a labor market rigidity as minimum wage or an increased cost of production leads to structural unemployment. In graph B, it is the market for goods and services or outputs in France. On the y-axis, we're measuring price. On the x-axis, we're measuring quantity. We have a downward sloping demand um, for goods and services by households, labeled D1, equal to the marginal benefit. And two upward sloping supply curves, again, according to the law of supply, labeled S1, S2, equal to our marginal cost. In the free market, we have an equilibrium at point A where S1 equals D1, providing a price in the free market for outputs at P1 with the quantity supply and demand at Q1. But because minimum wage is um, imposed uh, and for firms that utilize low-skilled labor, that higher wage becomes an added cost of production, which will raise their supply curve from S1 to S2 or inward from S1 to S2.
that sets a new equilibrium at point B, where S2 equals D1, we see an increase in the price of outputs from P1 to P2 as a result of increased input prices uh, resulting from minimum wage, and that leads to a reduction in the quantity supply and demand from Q1 to Q2. The higher price will cause households to decrease the quantity of their demand from point A to point B. Due to the lack of, uh, of the quantity of demand, firms will unemploy resources like labor, thus explaining higher unemployment and contributing to structural unemployment. In graph C, at the national level, we're illustrating the French national economy. And since minimum wage is applied across the entire country, it will impact all firms within France that employ low-skilled labor. So since wages are a cost of production that can shift the aggregate supply curve from SRAS1 to SRAS2, from point A to point B at that intersection, and that leads to a rise in the price level from PL1 to PL2, a decrease in real GDP from Y1 to Y2, and a decrease in the quantity of aggregate demand from point A to point B. Due to that reduction in the quantity of aggregate demand, firms will fire excess resources like labor, thus also contributing to structural unemployment and unemployment in the national economy. All right. So there we have it. We have uh, France as an applied example. Uh, we can see how the higher minimum wage potentially in France for low skilled worker can generate higher youth unemployment and contribute to their uh, long run average level of unemployment being greater than that of the United States, as an example. There's, of course, good positives and negatives to this, uh, but I won't go into those details. Um, but that's that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. Don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.